All right, so let's talk about the derivatives. I don't have a slide for the derivative of a linear, so just write this down, think about it. So we said the first kind of sublinear was where it was just one central atom and one thing attached, okay? But now instead of this being a bond, say this were just lone pair. So then it's just an element by itself of lone electrons. And so we don't really talk about the shape of that, okay? So if that one ends up being a bond versus a lone pair, then we don't talk about that one. All right, what if we go back to our other linear, our AX2, okay? So AX2 is this, I've got two bonds, but now instead of this being a bond, it's a lone pair. So now he's a lone pair, okay? So what is this shape? So if I look at the shape, this is just that other linear. So if I have a central atom with one bond and one lone pair, it's still linear and it's still 180. So that's why I don't really have a slide on it because it doesn't really change if it's lone pairs versus if it's bonds, okay? Now let's talk about the trigonal. So let's talk about trigonal planar. So let's make our trigonal planar molecule. Okay, so trigonal planar, okay? But instead of them all being bonds, this is now a lone pair, okay? So this is a lone pair just on here. So what happens is that this lone pair, because he's on the central atom, he's really close to the central atom, he's gonna push these guys down. So what happens is these guys get pushed down because of that lone pair, okay? So he pushes it down, and so now we have this shape. It looks kind of similar, to trigonal planar, but remember, now it's only two things, okay? Because this is a lone pair on the top, not a bond, all right? So let's talk about what this shape is. Here we go. So this would look like if I have two bonds and one lone pair. Two bonds, one lone pair. So the lone pair is just sitting on top, like my little toothpick is sitting on top, and this is the shape. The way we talk about this is say you had it was straight, it was linear, and then I did this. Think about what this kind of looks like. It looks like it's kind of bent. So this shape is called a bent shape. And the notation here would be AX2E. It still has three electron groups because there's two bonds and one lone pair. So it's under the parent group of trigonal planar. Okay, so the parent group is trigonal planar, but the difference is instead of it being three bonds, because this was AX3, it's two bonds, and then the E stands for a lone pair. So the parent geometry of this guy is the trigonal planar, but his geometry is bent. So let's think about what was trigonal planar's bond angles. Trigonal planar's bond angles was 120. So we said that these, they were more like out here, and then what happens is, they're like this, and then when the lone pair comes, they get pushed down. So if they're gonna get pushed down, this bond angle gets smaller. So if it's originally 120, all you would write is less than 120, okay? So all you have to know is that it's gonna be less than 120. So this bond angle from this to here is less than 120. And that's all you have to know for that one. All right, let's do the next one. So the next one was tetrahedral. So let me build a tetrahedral. You want to get to uh, watch me build a tetrahedral really quick. All right, this is our tetrahedral, right? Two up, two down, bar stool, however you want to think about it, okay? Now, one of these is going to be a lone pair. So I'm going to take one. Mm, let's take this one. Take this one, and so now it's a lone pair. So this is guy's a lone pair. So what's gonna happen is everything else has to move away from him. So if he's the lone pair, he's gonna move down. He's gonna move down more. He's gonna move down more. So it's kind of like a more severe bar stool, but instead of you having your head, it's literally just the stool with nobody sitting on it, okay? Let me angle this one a little bit better so you can see it. So it's more like the bar stool with nobody sitting on top, okay? So you have the top, the central atom with the three below it, 
Okay. So here, you still have four things. Tetrahedral was AX4. We still have four things, but now it's three bonds and one lone pair. Okay, three bonds and one lone pair. Now I said it kind of looks like a bar stool, but the other thing you could think about is this is the top and you have the three at the base. It kind of looks like a pyramid. Okay, so let me show you that shape and then we'll go back. So this is what the Lewis dot structure would look like. You say one, two, three, four things. So the parent group is tetrahedral, but one of those is a lone pair. So this would be three, a three, one. Three bonds, one lone pair. And so that is gonna look like a pyramid. So this is where the top of your bar stool would be, but this is like the stool itself. You got your three kind of going down, okay? Here's another picture of the pyramidal shape, okay? So you've got one, two, three, four. One of them is a lone pair, three bonds. So parent group is tetrahedral, but for me it's that pyramid shape. And here you can kind of see it a little bit more the top with the base of your pyramid, okay? So this is my pyramidal shape. So we call this one pyramidal. It's got a triangle base pyramid, okay? And the center atom at the apex of the top of my pyramid, okay? Now let's talk about what the bond angle would be. Tetrahedral's perfect bond angle was 109.5. So, what this is, it's gonna push everything together, so our bond angle is gonna be less than 109.5, okay? So this is my subgroup for our tetrahedral. Now, for tetrahedral, because we had four bonds, we can actually make one alone pair, and we can make another one alone pair, because the most we need is two bonds, okay? So I can make another one alone pair. So I'll take this guy off, and now he's a lone pair. So when he, whoop, when I took him off, he's gonna push these guys away to make this shape, okay? What shape is this kind of look like? It's a shape we already kind of talked about. It's got that V shape and then kind of pushed in, okay? So think about it, it went like this and it got pushed down. This was our bent shape, okay? So this, Still has four groups, but it's two bonds, two lone pairs, and this we call bent. Sometimes you might see tetrahedral bent because it wants to talk about the difference between this bent and our first bent from our trigonal geometry because this one's bent and this is bent. So we have two bents, but the difference is the lone pairs. This bent has two lone pairs and two bonds. This bent has two bonds and only one lone pair. The other big difference, so like I said, it looks similar to that trigonal planar bent, but the big difference is the angle. Since this parent group is 109.5, its bond angle is less than 109.5. Whereas in my trigonal planar's bent, it's less than 120. So that's the big difference between the two bents is the bond angle. Looks very similar, but they're actually different. So let me show you some of those. So here's what I was saying. This would be the tetrahedral. So it'd be 109.5, but when we make it a lone pair, it's gonna smush in. So this is for the pyramidal shape. So if I have a lone pair, these are gonna smush in to be less than that. If I make it another lone pair, okay, these two are gonna smush in, and this is where I get my bent shape. Okay, so two lone pairs, these push in from 109.5, and these are gonna be even smaller than if it was only one lone pair, because it gets pushed in even more, and so it's much smaller than 109.5. So this is how you'd look at it, you would say, okay, how many things? One, two, three, four, so the parent geometry is tetrahedral, but it's two lone pairs and two bonds, so it's a two, two, and a two, two would be the tetrahedral bent or just bent configuration, okay? So now on the next lecture, I'm gonna talk about what are these subgroups for that trigonal bipyramidal.